I was recently going through my channel looking at old videos, and I had realized it had been over a year since I had posted my first edit to this channel. What a different time that was, 2018. I was so young, I would just gotten out of my nappies, finally learned to walk. Anyway, when looking at the video, I noticed it was pretty janky. This got me thinking. I was making all these amateur mistakes throughout the video, so what if I could go back and correct those mistakes? And that got me thinking even further. Since, as some of you know, I'm unnecessarily organized with these edits. I still had all the replays, project files, and renders from this first edit. What if I could take those files, re-record and edit the footage, upload it to YouTube, and then you click on it, and then the video would start, and then I would start talking about how I was going through my old videos, and we'd end up here. So, obviously it worked. Before I hop in, I want to establish what this recreation will and won't be. Like I said, it's all the same clips as the original, so I'm going to do my best to line up all the cuts to the original. This means I won't be changing the structure of the montage, more so just the cinematics and polish. I think this is a good starting point, so if I ever want to do something like this again in the future, it leaves me with more to change in that future video. I think bringing up the old video is also a good way to show that everyone starts from somewhere. I'm not claiming I'm the best editor on the planet, but you can see clear improvement across each of my works. So hopefully comparing the old me and the new me's style will help to show some area of improvement in your own stuff. And speaking of you, I'm going to be doing a ton of similar videos to this and more, so subscribe, Mr. Mr. Or if you're the 2% of my viewership, madam. First step was taking the old edit into After Effects. I found the exact frame of each cut throughout the video and marked it with this little marker. Boop. Next, I booted Rocket League, made a new and improved reshade preset for this new and improved video, and began recording all the sinnies, signs, cinematics, sinnies, cinematics. This step was pretty time consuming, but it was still way faster than when I normally would make a video from scratch. Since I had a direct reference for each shot, I'd just look over to the original and re-record it with better motion, cinematography, etc. I spent maybe an hour or two getting all the cinematics, and then I took those into After Effects. Since I had made all those markings at each cut, it was as simple as going through the list of shots and time remapping them into the right notches. Again, the creative side of this was a lot easier than normal, but it was so much more tedious. Halfway through recording the shots, I literally started watching Netflix on a different monitor, it was so boring. After I got all the shots laid in, I went back and recorded all my POVs. Now I'd normally record these all together, but I'm having some issue with Shadowplay where if I start a recording while in game, it doesn't record any audio from the PC, so I had to start it from the desktop and just record every POV from every replay in one go. It was really annoying and I'd really like to fix this issue, so if anybody has any potential fixes or something, please let me know. Finally, I got all those shots imported alongside the cinematics, and I realized I was missing a few, so I had to go back and record the touch-ups. Quick break, what am I looking to do differently when recording these shots? and you know, what's the point of re-editing the video in the first place? I want to point out that the first version was edited in Premiere Pro and this new version is edited in After Effects. I keep getting people fighting me, saying that Premiere is just as good to make edits in, and it's not. You don't get the same control that you do in After Effects, all the speed ramping feels linear as hell, and it's just gonna look obvious and not great. Rant out of the way, first and foremost, the cinematography in the video needed an update. Back then, I wasn't as comfortable with Bakisma Dolly Cam and was overall less experienced with camera work, so I'll be looking to add more dynamic and interesting shots with this redo. Also, the flow of the video is pretty janky, both because I was inexperienced and because it was edited in Premiere, so I'm hoping to make it seem more professional overall. And lastly, I've just developed my style more, and I've had more time to practice everything. The color grading was way too intense in my opinion, the cropped in aspect ratio bars are unnecessary, and all the cuts are inconsistent. The first time editing this, it took me a month, the second time it was just a few hours. So you can see I've definitely progressed and I've learned a lot of things about how to expedite the whole process. Also for this little shot, I used the spline dolly cam for the first time. It wasn't great, but it's kind of cool. Okay, so all the clips are recorded and aligned. Next, I had to actually time remap all the clips. Again, very tedious when done all at once. Although this step does a lot to actually shape the look and feel of the video, so it's a lot more fun to do. I also realized old me was really bad at syncing clips sometimes. Certain shots would just be way off beat, so I had to go in and tweak those where necessary. 
After all the footage was laid in and time remapped, I took this little adjustment layer I made of exposure and blur and duplicated it and laid it over almost every single cut throughout the video. I do this manually because each cut requires the look to be a little bit different, sometimes the blur lasts longer, sometimes it doesn't ramp up from the shot before, etc. It doesn't seem like a lot, but all this can take a ton of time when done over a 3 minute video. After the first layers of transitions are in, I then go in with the further effects. This includes shake, more exposure, pan crop, really anything that happens happens during the clip itself. If none of this makes sense to you, check out the beginner's editing guide I made. It's way more in depth into the things I'm talking about. This step is also a bit tiring because I actually need to listen to the music while doing it, so I couldn't watch anything else while editing. I just had to sit there for however long it took in one sitting. So tweaks took the longest time out of all of this, but now they're done. Now comes the easy part, the final adjustments. These all include pre-comping what I've done, adding a layer of sharpness, adding motion blur with R, S, and B, and doing the color grading. Render it out and BAM! We're done! Definitely a fun project to work on. I think it shows a lot of personal progression in my style, and it also serves as a milestone for how far this channel has come since I started everything. There are still some janky bits that carry over from the first edit. I would definitely rearrange a lot of the video, putting cuts in different places and moving the shots around but that was out of my control on this project in particular. Like I said though, if I can find a good video to do this again with, I'll switch it up a bit. And as far as what you can take away from this, watch the comparison video in the description, as well as the original, and look at what I change across the versions, what works and what doesn't. Keep in mind, a good amount is stylistic, as I've adapted my own style over this time, but I still think there's a lot there that you can take away from looking at the comparison. My points that I took away were not to overdo the color grade, the black bars weren't really necessary, RSMB or motion blur is essential, and use After Effects or you are automatically a bad person. I mean, use whatever you want, but if you want to do a proper edit edit, After Effects is the way to go, in my opinion. Also, if you guys have any suggestions for videos in the future, let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. Also, join my Discord or I'll literally come to your house and step on your toes really f***ing hard. Thanks for all the support, and I'm excited to see where we go from here. 2020, whoop! Finally, without further ado, Speed, featuring Speedy, version 2. Yeah.